Most people either won't know or won't remember that this is how mobile phones used to feel and look like once upon a time. They used to be big, heavy and were designed for limited functionality, namely for voice calls. Over the years, these mobile phones have become smaller, lighter, faster and are able to do far more things than just voice calls. When Apple announced iPhone 15, they said that it has strong and lightweight titanium design with new contoured edges, a new action button, powerful camera upgrades and A17 Pro for next level performance and mobile gaming. It is far powerful than supercomputer of 80s. Let's see how this transition happened from big bulky devices to nice small powerful computers. Welcome to the Tech Knowledge Story Series. This is targeted at youth looking to understand how technology has been evolving and how it will evolve further. In part 1, we will discuss how technology progress has made things smaller, faster, cheaper and much more. Let's make a start. Everyone knows Neil Armstrong's famous words, that's one small step for a man one giant leap for mankind from Apollo 11 landing on the moon in July 1969. You might have even seen this picture of Margaret Hamilton standing next to listings of the software she and her team at MIT produced for the Apollo 11 project. What you may not realize is that this scientific calculator is far more powerful than the computer used in Apollo 11 to send people to moon and back. Even better, the USB-C chargers nowadays contain CPUs that are on par with the power of the Apollo 11 guidance computer known as AGC. IBM 350 is generally billed as the first hard disk in history. Back in 1956, this was one of the most advanced cutting-edge technologies. It weighed 1 ton or 1000 kilograms and it had a storage capacity of 5 megabytes. In today's terms, you could store a 3-4 minute mp3 song on it. The Computer Museum in Cambridge in UK has a nice collection of hard disk platters showing how they have evolved over the years. Hard disks are mostly hidden and we hardly ever see them in practice nowadays. SD cards are still commonly used nowadays. In 2005, a micro SD card had a max of 128 MB of storage. By 2014, it was 128 GB. Now we have 1 terabytes of storage, though not very common or cheap, but it is still available. When it comes to computing, you may have learned about vacuum tubes and transistors in your physics class. The first transistor was roughly 2.5 cm across. The integrated circuits or ICs contain a large number of transistors and other electronic components that were traditionally built on silicon chips or wafers. They are mostly referred to as just chips nowadays. They were invented around 1959 but they gained momentum and visibility when they were started to be used in NASA's Apollo program. Apollo 11's two AGCs or Apollo Guidance Computers had just over 2000 ICs in them. Each of the AGC had around 32 KB of RAM and 72 KB of ROM. This is nothing compared to today's standards. Intel is one of the largest semiconductor chip manufacturer by revenue. In one of the slides they shared they detailed the evolution process of their chips. In the first chip, the size of the transistors was 90 nanometers each. Now we are getting 7 and 4 nanometer chips commercially. Apple's latest iPhone uses 3 nanometer chips made by the largest chip manufacturing firm 
called TMSC based in Taiwan. In 1965, Intel co-founder Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double roughly every two years with a minimal rise in cost. This prediction became known as Moore's law and is depicted in the figure shown. The more transistors or components on a device, the cost per device is reduced while the performance per device is increased. You will often hear that Moore's law is dead but then something new and revolutionary comes up and everyone realizes that Moore's law still holds true. Let us see an interesting comparison showing how computers have evolved as predicted by Moore's law. The city of Norwich in England, UK had a forward thinking treasurer who ordered the first Elliott 405 computer to handle its rates and payroll. Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, is a series of small single board computers developed in the UK by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in association with Broadcom. This model shown here is the Raspberry Pi Zero introduced in 2015. If we compare these two very different computers created roughly 60 years apart, you can see how things have evolved. Elliott 405 cost 85,000 pounds in 1957. In 2015's money, it would cost nearly 2 million pounds. The Pi Zero, on the other hand, cost just US dollar five, and it blows Elliott 405 away in comparison. This picture is showing evolution of MacBook. The one on the left is PowerBook 500 that was released in 1994. Its price was $2,270. I won't go in the details, but you can see how heavy and bulky it looks. It had a maximum RAM of 36 MB and the most expensive model had 750 MB of storage. Compare this with the MacBook Pro in 2019 on the right. Not too different price wise, but this has 64 GB of RAM and up to 8 terabytes of SSD storage. I haven't checked, but the processor is probably millions of times faster in comparison. iPhone 12 is still being sold by Apple. This chart from PC Mag provides a fantastic comparison of how many flops or floating point operations per second an iPhone 12 can do in comparison to Cray 2, a popular supercomputer from the 80s as well as Apollo 11 guidance computer AGC. As you can see, iPhone 12 is approximately 5000 times faster than the Cray 2 supercomputer and about 900 million times faster than the Apollo 11 guidance computer AGC. This is another slide shared by Intel, which shows how Intel believes Moore's law will continue to hold and we will see chips with a trillion transistors in 2030. We need to understand why this is important. When new hardware technologies, devices, gadgets, equipments, etc. are being designed, the designers take Moore's law into account to predict how they will be able to reduce the size, make things faster, cheaper, consume less power, etc. in the future iterations of the product. This makes it easier for them to create a roadmap. Similarly, other component makers can make their roadmap based on this. Recently, you may have seen that Apple announced the Apple Vision Pro, which they call as revolutionary special computer that seamlessly blends digital content with the physical world. This has really only been possible with the evolution of semiconductors as predicted by Moore's law. The first generation of the headset will be heavy and clunky, but over the next few years, it will evolve to a nice sleek wearable that will give an excellent wearable experience. This is all we wanted to mainly talk about in this video. We will look at some of the implications of Moore's law in future videos in this series. I hope you found this useful.
the slides will be available on 3G 4G. Look at the description of this video to learn more about where to get them from. Hope to see you on our channel again soon. Thank you and have a good day.